Now, last time we said that, you know, that PV diagram, or sorry, um, our moving boundary work is what we're using to power a whole lot of engines. And we can model that on a PV diagram if we want to. So like right here, I see I have a pressure. As the pressure changes, my volume changes. In this case, the pressure goes down and my volume is increasing. Because my volume is increasing, I'm doing work. Now the cool thing is, the cool thing is that you can actually find the exact amount of work you're doing just from that line. You don't even have to know the equation. Now how do you do that? Well, what we learn is that the area under this curve, so if I'm going through this entire um, process, the area under that curve is equal to the work I just did or the work that had to be done. And so if I know the shape of that process path on a you know, PV diagram, I can figure out that work without having to know any magical equations. This is helpful because that's what I need to do in real life. If I'm trying to figure out how much work an engine is doing. I might not know every single detail of that cycle because it's a real world cycle. But what I probably can measure is pressure and volumes. And if I can measure pressure and volume, then I can tell this curve. If I can tell that curve, even if it doesn't have some nice equation like y is equal to x squared plus two, I can still do integrals because we can do them numerically. What you end up doing is you make little shapes like this. You can make them rectangles, you can make them trapezoids, and you add up a bunch of them. And by doing a bunch of these shapes, you can get something that is very, very close to the exact integral because integrals are just areas. Don't let a teacher ever scare you. Integrals are just areas. Okay, now the second thing we learn is that if I have a process path like this and the path of the process matters, then I'm going to have to be careful about that because in this case, I produced 10 kilojoules of work. In this case, I produced five. In this case, I produced eight. How did I got from one to two really matters. Interestingly enough, I'm just gonna go back one slide here. Boop, boop, boop. This little symbol right here, when you see a delta like that, that means that it is path dependent, okay? That's path dependent. If you see one that looks like this, it's not path dependent, path independent for a lot of things. So just know that that's actually something that's helping you out later on. You'll see those every once in a while in thermo. Okay, going back to it again. So if we can know that a particular process of going one to two produces 10 kilojoules, another one of going one to two produces five, well, depending on what I'm doing, I can then make choices about how I'm gonna set this up. Because by adding multiple processes together, I can form a cycle. And so this is what a cycle would look like. So a cycle is simply when I start at one point, I go to a second state, and I can do a bunch of other points, but eventually I come back to that first point. That's a cycle. This one right here is a super simple cycle. And the area between these two lines is either the network that's been produced or the network that I had to provide to keep that cycle going. If you're wondering how you tell if you're providing it or not, well, you have to decide which one's producing the power and which one isn't. So in this case, I have you know it expanding right here, so that's on top, and I have it being compressed on the bottom. So my boundary work is negative right here, my boundary work is positive right here, so this one would be producing power. But if we go, um, if we can tell which cycles we're using, and if we can compress it in a way that takes less energy than we expanded it, we can produce power. So that's why we're gonna learn all these different processes in this chapter, so we can figure out which ones we want to use to add them up and produce the most power possible for our particular system. As a note, it's, it's never that complicated, okay? That's, that's more like a um, applied thermo, thermodynamics two kind of diagram. Okay, now in a car engine, the boundary work is done by the expanding hot gases inside of your piston, like normal. But there's a lot of other things that are going into that. There's friction, there's the friction in the crank. There is also just atmospheric pressure that's having to push out of way. So all of that boundary work is having to resist not just, you know, it's not just perfectly going to do useful things. A lot of it is being dissipated. And so because of that, we have to think about how we can do this as most as efficiently as possible. And are we producing the power to make it worthwhile? Okay, so next time we're gonna get into all the different processes that we're gonna see in this chapter. And we'll go through and we'll develop the equations 
we'll keep going from there. Thank you all so much. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.